All right, let's see what's going down. Splatfest theme halftime report. There, net. That makes sense. Huh. I guess that's what you get when you have a smaller team. Not as small as Bigfoot, though. Uh, Intel, Mincemeat. What's the. Oh, yeah, it's Mako Mart. Okay. That might be fine. So, I can tell you, I've already been playing this Blatfest. As you can see, we're already a pretty high. Right, like I've already put a lot of time into it. Uh, I'll take that. Don't need another latches this effort. I don't need that. Yeah. I don't need a hot do I? Sure, I'll like you. Oh, yeah, I've done a lot of leveling up today. Ready to go wallflower, mystery box, with some stupid cards. Oh, I already have one of those? Huh. Interesting. So yeah, I've already been playing this Blatfest today. I put, eh, like two-ish hours, maybe, probably two. It was definitely somewhere between two and three. Because I know I went through at least one, like, hey, the ma multiplayer maps have updated. So yeah, I played for a while. I did okay. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, I've been playing a little bit, you know, nothing amazing. I was at, I'll show my clout a little bit. But yeah, so I have been playing a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, you know, we've been talking, so we've been talking about Splatoon, right? It's all we've been playing for in chat. But honestly, I really have not, like, I know at the end of the chill season, I expressed my disillusionment with this game. And since then, I was like, oh, we're now entering the next era, which is going to be the villain era, right? It's my Splatoon villain era, as I kept joking. But so far, the villain era has just been me not wanting to play the game. If I'm just being completely and fairly honest. I've just had no interest in, like, playing the game at all. But, eh... I don't know. I started, I was like, I wanted to listen to my audiobook today because I, I was near the end and I actually did finish it. Not, we're not going to talk about it tonight. It doesn't really matter. But, um, I was like, yeah, you know, I've got, I've got some time left in my audiobook. I had, uh, what was it? It wasn't two hours. It was like an hour 57 or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I'll just finish my audiobook. Oh, wow. Off to a good start already. So yeah, so I was like, yeah, I'll just finish my audiobook and play some Splatoon. I'll work on some new gear while I'm at it, right? Because I've got all this, I've got all these gear key pieces I keep buying. I should maybe actually start using them, you know? So that's exactly what I did. I start, I started using my gear. As you can see, I'm wearing some different stuff, at least a new shoe and a new sh uh, headwear. That are both, um, perfect pieces of gear. So I have at least been working on it. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, I've been doing that today, and I finished my audiobook. And then I listened to some other things as well. And yeah, so that was all good. So that was how I started off today. But yeah, I still... Did they... No. But, but yes, but so yeah, I actually had fun playing Splatoon today. 
for the first time since this new season, I actually had fun with the game, which I'm glad, because yeah, at the end of the chill season, I was just so miserable. Like, just being... Oh. Like, just being completely honest, I was just miserable at the end of the last season. So coming into this season, it's just... I've only, I've literally, it's literally just been Turf War all day. Like, I haven't even given, like, Ranked Mode a chance. If that matters. But it's just made the game more enjoyable. Honestly, not having to deal with that. It's just been for the better. I picked up this blaster, or this, the end zap, just mainly because I picked up the end zap 89 because it's got, um, okay, I did not want to grab that. I picked up end zap 89 because it's got a uh, super chump and I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to try out super chump, but the only two weapons that have it are the end zap and the, I want to say it's a clash blaster and God, do I want to, I not want to play the clash blaster. That sounds awful. So I didn't. So I picked up the end zap. You know, I used, admittedly, I used the original end zap, what is it, the 85, when the game came out. Because I thought, because, you know, everybody thought Tacticooler was going to be the meta. We were wrong about that, but we didn't know that at the time. They're able to just perch on those ledges and take the spot. That really sucks. It's an interesting design for a tricolor map, right? Like, they definitely restricted it a lot more, but I think that's fine. I actually think this map works fine in tricolor. Okay, good. It was close, though. Gosh, was that close. But yeah. but yeah, no, I've been having fun with Splatoon. I have not been playing Breath of the Wild. I said last week that it was going to be a busy week for me. I... <laughs> I underestimated. So you can see my new gear, right? Last ditch effort with three bomb ups. And then I did a stealth jump with uh, three speed ups. It's fine. Again, I, I don't entirely know what I'm doing. But, you know, three gears are good. And I, I want to make a shirt that's got a main swim and probably some special charge-up on it. But, you know, I can't do shirts right now. So, yeah. I'll take what I can get, you know. Yeah, I think I want some special charge-up. Don't know what shirts I have that have that on it. But I'll figure it out. So yeah, Splatoon, I, this is like the one time I've had to play videos game this week. I have just been busy. I have just been so, like, I knew I was going to be busy. I severely underestimated how busy I was going to be. And then yesterday, I had some time to play, because I, I played Splatoon earlier today. I want to make that clear. I played earlier today. But yesterday, I had some time after work where it was like, oh, I could do Breath of the Wild. But I I think that's there's a college humor sketch where it's like, oh, the girls you'll date. And it's like, oh, yeah, you, you know, you'll date the party girl. And, you know, you'll go out and you'll have party with her every night, every night. But by the end of it, you'll just be exhausted. And at that point, you wouldn't give up this nap for all the coked up sex in the world. Happy dinosaur riding. And that's exactly how I felt. Like, I was just so exhausted. Like, yeah, I could play Breath of the Wild, but I wouldn't give up this nap for anything. Because I was just so out of it. So, yeah, I just, I literally just took a nap yesterday. That was what I did, and it all worked out fine. Ugh. <sighs> So yeah, here, but you know, we're back within chat today. Are we doing Zelda tomorrow? I'm definitely thinking about it. Because I do want to play, I want to, after everything that was shown off with Tears of the Kingdom, I want to play more. I really just want to play Tears of the Kingdom. But you know, 
We can't beggars, can't be choosers and all that jazz. So I gotta work with what I have. Took a stab at it. But yeah, um, anything else? Anything else to talk about at the beginning? So yeah, we might, I don't know, we'll talk about it again at the end. I'll see how I'm feeling tomorrow. I pr I, pr I just, ugh. If not, then we'll see. But yeah, so tonight's news stories, we have a ton. We have a ton of news stories this week. Everything just kind of popped off. So we've got a bunch of them. So let's... I We've got stuff on... Do we have anything from Microsoft this week? I know we have stuff from Nintendo and Sony. As well as some... Um, is there any PC gaming news? Other than the fact that The Last of Us port on PC sucks. And every... And... I, I loved Greg Miller's take on it, honestly. Greg Miller had a fantastic take on it. That was just like, yep, this is what you deserve, PC gamers. Oh, we actually got that off. Oh. I did not expect to get that. But our first story tonight, I saw this news story literally right after I started stopped streaming last week. Like, I missed it last week. And I just, I saw it like immediately after the stream. So the story is security breach, FNAF security breach is coming to Switch. I think that is hilarious. So I I don't I've I haven't played Security Breach, but I've watched a bunch of Let's Players and Speedrunners play it. And it's really interesting to watch, right? It's it's a great speedrunning game, especially early on because it was so broken. Astral Spiff. I gotta give it up to Astral Spiff. But there's tons of other great people who've played it and done great stuff in it. But, um... Yeah, so... And, like, I remember... The game was is such a buggy, broken mess. Like, as a game, that's a bad thing, right? But as, a, as someone who watches content creators, it's really entertaining. You know, I once said, like, Fallout 76 is the most fun... I have had with a bad game I have never played. That's I think that now goes to Security Breach. It's a bad game that I have never played. But I have had so much fun with it. And so it's coming to Switch. And like modern consoles can't even run it that well. Like PS5. The game is so poorly optimized. That yeah PS5's and Series X's can't even run it that well. Like, it's got so many problems. It's not fucking the Euphoric Brothers um, ba Garden of Banban. Oh my god, I'm... I got an ad for Garden of Banban on YouTube the other day. Oh my god. It, see it seizure warning. It's just a bunch of flashing lights. Like, that's like the first like five seconds are just flashing lights on a... Right, they flash between black and just, like, shots of the gameplay. Super quick. It's just awful. It was awful. I can't believe they would let something like that go up on YouTube. Was that was it an official Euphorics Brothers ad? I don't know. But it was an ad for Garden of Ban Ban. And it was terrible. Like, I legitimately could not believe something like that existed. Horrendous. Fuck them. Fuck whoever did that. Like, I, I, I'm not epileptic, uh, or at least that type of epileptic. I'm not epileptic at all. Just let me put that clear. I know there are multiple types of epilepsy. But, you get what I'm saying, right? That, that was fucking disgusting. That app. Oh my god. So, Security Breach on Switch, that, that must run terribly. I don't know how you could take the game in its broken, buggy state and make it run on Switch. I don't think it was a cloud version. I don't... Even a cloud version probably wouldn't run that great because it's... Uh, 
security breach. But I don't know how you get that game to run on Switch. Like, at all. Because it's just such a buggy bro. I know they fixed some of the things. Made speedruns less interesting, I'll say that. But still, I don't know how you get that game running on Switch. It's just going to be awful. <laughs> Maybe there'll be a new host of bugs. Wouldn't that be fun? I don't know. I've had a lot of fun with Security Breach. Do not recommend playing it. But there are plenty of content creators who have done great stuff out of it. Not Mark... I wouldn't actually recommend Markiplier. Even though I did watch his series. Because he just has a miserable time playing it. And I know some people... Like, Misery can be super entertaining. But not always. Sometimes it's just, like, they're miserable. And it just kind of sucks to watch. Like, they're just clearly... Like, you can have fun in Misery. But not with this. We've lost. I can tell you right now. Getting all three of those Ultra Stamps. Or Ultra Signals. I'm still disappointed they never did anything else with... I mean, there's still at least a y another year of content for this game. Year in, like, probably, I don't know, what is it? Three? It's actually, what? Probably closer to five months. Another year and five months. Probably. So, like, there's still time to do, like, Mega Bombs or whatever. I'm just... The Ultra Sprinkler is just kind of boring. Whatever. But yeah, I cannot believe Security Breach is coming to Switch. That's just so... I just find that so funny. So, our next story... So, you remember that game Multiverses that people were like, Oh, wow, this actually looks really cool, right? There's clearly been a lot of effort and care put into the game. And then, like, six months later, nobody was playing it. Like, its Steam numbers had dropped by, like, 99%. Yeah, well, turns out that game is still around. Or at least it was. Because, as we learned from the developer's message put out earlier in the week, the game, the beta will be shutting down in June. So, I do remember, I feel like a, a lot of people were blindsided by this. And to be fair, I kind of was as well. I knew the game was in beta. I remember them saying, like, hey, this is our open, free-to-play beta. But at no point did they ever give any hint that, oh, no, this beta is one day going to shut down before the game's full release. I don't feel like they ever said that at any point. And I know people have done the research, and no, they didn't. Right? We just always assumed that, hey, eventually the open beta, like most other games, online multiplayer games, would just become the full game. And, you know, like, Multiverses was never bad or anything. Right, like, I know it dropped a bunch of players' numbers, but honestly, out of all of the Smash clones I've seen, it's honestly one of the more put-together ones. Like, there are some pretty bad Smash clones out there, some of which have shut down. But Multiverses was more put-together, but no, it is shutting down. They are, there will still be some things that work, right? Like, offline play will still work. Uh, you can do local matches. So, it's not like the game's, like, completely going offline or anything. And they did, con right, because a bunch of people were like, Oh, well, I spent $100 in this game. Do I just lose everything I spent money, right? Do all my microtransaction purchases just go away? And no, they did, of course, and I expected this the second they announced this anyways. They did confirm that the full, that any microtransaction you purchased... Wow, there was nobody there to protect that. Yeah, they did confirm that every microtransaction purchased during the beta will just carry over to the full game. So, right, for people worried about losing any of that, well, hey, guess what? You're not. At least not at the moment. We'll see what happens once the actual game releases. Because you know how fast live services die nowadays. See, I can't remember. Did they ever, like, update the game and add any characters? I can't think of anything, but they might have. That's the thing. Like, I can't think... Like, I remember when Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl added, like, Garfield to the game. But I can't think of... Did Multiverses ever add another character? See, I can't think of anything. 
Yeah. So they're new. So they're shutting down the game, right? All the online stuff for the beta, and then the game will go into full release early next year. So if I had to guess, I would say probably the first three months of next year. It honestly, I could totally see it as like a February game, like an early February game. I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't know. Again, it doesn't. It's not a bad game. It's just at the worst, it's forgettable. I don't know, it really does make, like, how do some games survive while others, just, like this, just, like, die off and lose 90% of their player base? But yet people still go back to Melee 22 years later, right? Like, what, what is it that stirs those things? I've always personally said it's quality, right? Smash Bros. just has a level of quality that despite all, any flaws, it keep Sakurai clearly cares. He puts a lot of effort into his game, and it keeps people coming back. That's what I've always said. But... But it's just, it's everyone, I feel like everyone was, yeah, kind of caught off guard by this. That, hey, multiverses is shutting down. Like, that really just doesn't feel like something that should have happened. Because, right, it, like, it would have just made sense to be like, hey, yeah... For them to basically come out in this announcement have been like, hey, we're planning for a full release early next year. But shutting down the online, it's just very interesting. I've never, I can't think of another example of this. For a game that has been in beta as long as it has. Like, I can think of other games that have had like short, like, one to two week betas that have done this. Because like, isn't this what over, because didn't like Overwatch have... A long beta that eventually just transitioned into the full game. I don't ever remember them shutting down Overwatch just to then later release the full game. I could be completely wrong, but I can't. I can't think of a time where they did that. So whatever. I don't know. I. I. Part of me is kind of curious, but again, Smash Bros has a level of quality. And you kind of lose that level of quality when you start adding in microtransactions and whatnot. Like, Smash Bros. is a $60 game that has so much in it. And then I know they had the DLC, and some people think the DLC is overpriced, and they're not entirely wrong. But there's that level of quality there. Whereas by putting in these microtransactions, sure, you're not paying the, the price of the game. But a lot of those, like, little slice of life... Just quality things that you get in something like Smash Bros. They get lost in that being a freemium game. It's just... I don't know, will a freemium game ever last? I mean, even Overwatch died eventually. And that was King of the Kingdom for a long time. To be fair, they did loot boxes so they can rot in hell for all I care about. I mean, outside of something like Candy Crush, I really can't think of anything else. Oh, so this is the new song. Yeah, they added a new song to the game. And all the... I haven't seen, like, any, like, concrete 100% proof. But from what it looks like... So the... This is the Squid Sisters featuring Ian BGM... And based on all the evidence, Ian BGM is Big Man. So this song probably features Big Man. And Big Man's real name is Ian. Which I think is just kind of funny. Yeah, Ian. His name is Ian. <laughs> I don't know, I remember there being, like, a fan theory that Big Man as, like, a name. It's, it, like, it wasn't his real name, but it was, like, the closest, like, translation to his real name. Which, that does kind of make sense, right? Like, oh, in whatever. I mean, again, he's based on Brazil. Big Man is based on Brazil, which I think is very interesting. But, yeah, like, that's the best, the best translation of his name is Big Man. 
that was a fa that was a fan theory. I don't remember if there was actually any evidence towards that. I guess it's Fanon. Yeah. So next up, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start off at the end of the week to get to the story. So on Monday, there was kind of this breaking news: Ubisoft has pulled out of E3 because earlier in the year, Ubisoft had said that they were going to be that as long as there is an E3 show, they were going to be there. Right, Ubisoft said that early in the year. So it was like, okay. But then, yeah, on Monday this week, hey, breaking news, Ubisoft has pulled out of E3. Of course, they're going to be hosting their own event um, on at the same time E3 normally would have been. I think it was, what, June 12th is their new event? Fuck Ubisoft, whatever. Right, it's still big news, because Ubisoft was one of the last big publishers supporting E3, because Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony have all pulled out. So that's what kind of made it big news. But then, okay, so it's like, that's huge. Then a few days later, Sega and Tencent also announced, I think separately, it might have been at the same time, but I'm going to guess separately, that they were also pulling out of E3. Or, you know, they had no plans to go. Either way, Sega and Tencent aren't at E3. So that that happened on, like, Wednesday. That happened, like, two days later. So it was like, holy shit. Really? And then the next day... Oh, ah, we got destroyed. Or we got destroyed. So the next day, they announced... Hey, guess what? E3 2023 has been cancelled. They say no plans of, like, bringing it back in the future. It was just a simple, yep, we've been canceled. You know, we tried to put on the best events. But clearly, that's not possible. And yeah, it's the real end of an era. But at the same time, E3 can kind of go fuck itself. You know, it's ran by the ESA, which is a terrible lobbying group that literally hates consumers. It doxed hundreds of people a few years back the esa is awful and so yeah well yes e3 is gamer christmas at the same time fuck the esa it's a terribly expensive convention for a trade show that just doesn't need to exist anymore especially because e3 doesn't really feel like a trade show anymore like it was just marketing and now we have the internet like, Nintendo caught on to this years ago, but they were one of the last holdouts. But yeah, e like, the ESA charged companies, like, $3 million to go to their event, to, like, hold a booth at their event. That's not an exact number, but it was something like that. It was a lot of money. You had to pay to go to E3, and you had to pay the ESA a ton of money. And that's just to go. Like, that's not any, like, building a booth or anything. Because they rented out the entire L.A. Convention Center. Which, you know they lost money canceling the event now. Just a few months out. So, yeah. It's kind of wild when you think about it. But, yeah. I'm kind You know, and the thing is that, luckily, Jeff Keighley has already stepped in. And been like, yeah, Summer Games Fest is still happening June 8th. Right? E3 died. But, like, all the writing was on the wall that this was going to happen. Right? Because Jeff, because E3 was an in-person event. And Jeff Keighley was like, no, we're just going to do a digital event. And guess what? He did it. And while it's kind of generic and, you know, it's kind of got some of the problems the Game Awards does, it's also fine. Really, the only thing I, with the death of E3, and I've said this before, the only thing I truly want is for a, a, that time of year, all the game companies just kind of get to come together and give their announcements. That was all I cared about. I don't actually care about the actual convention. And, like, nobody, and besides for, like, a few journalists and whatnot, nobody actually played any of those demos. Like, we as our modern day, as our average consumer, never actually played any of the games at E3. It was just really convenient to have all of that in one place at the same time. 
And I right, Microsoft's putting on their show June 13th. Ubisoft is putting on their show June 12th. Jeff Keighley Summer Game Fest is June 8th. So without the ESA, what I want is still happening. So I'm fine with the death of the ES with E3. I know some people are gonna mourn it. I know Kinda Funny did a funeral for E3, and I did also watch that, and I do recommend it. Because again, Gre Greg Miller was spitting fire this week. He was doing great. So yeah, it's it's been a. <laughs> It's been a crazy week to see, right? Just one, it was a domino effect. One little show gets canceled, then the next, then the next. But E3 is dead. And while in some ways I miss it, in others I'm glad it's gone. Mostly just because I fucking hate the ESA. Really, that's what it all comes down to. I just hate the ESA. And I guess I, and I don't have that stigma towards Jeff Keighley. Like, is he perfect? No. But I don't hate him like I hate the ESA. So next up, so we had the big gameplay reveal for Tears of the Kingdom. And I, you know, I, like many others, were hesitant to sit down and watch this gameplay reveal. You know, there was a lot going on here, and we were all kind of worried, right? Because Nintendo's been keeping this game in lock and key. They've been keeping their secrets, and it's like, oh, are they going to come now and give away all their secrets? And no, they didn't. Sure, they showed off a few things that we didn't know, including one very big thing in my opinion. But no, they didn't give away all their secrets. They didn't give away the keys to the kingdom. In fact, they actually kept things very restrained. It felt like a less, it felt like a less, right, if you were, okay, so speaking of E3, if you remember at E3 2016, they had the big reveal for Breath of the Wild, where they basically had people, right, it was the only game they brought to E3 that year, and they just had journalists trying the game, right, they gave them just the Great Plateau, and were like, okay, here's the Great Plateau, here's the ruins, go around, explore, adventure, see all the crazy things the game has to offer and if you imagine that but as like a 10 minute scripted youtube video that's what this felt like right where like that big reveal for breath of the wild where we learned about magnesis stasis the bombs cryonis and all the other things on the great plateau like i remember this crate right the crazy video of someone finding a stone talus and seeing that on twitter and being like what what? And then, of course, you had the treehouse playing the game as well. But you would see clips on Twitter, and it was it was this really cool thing. And it was literally just the starting area of the game people got to mess around with. And yeah, this kind of had that feeling, but in a 10-minute scripted YouTube video. Nothing to do... There was nothing to do with story in this. It was purely about the gameplay... Revealing the game's secrets on what changes they've made. So first off, I'll say the overworld right having playing through Breath of the Wild again right now, the overworld feels different enough. Like I could tell where they are by watching the trailer, but it's not one for one. Like there definitely are some changes. There definitely are some new things there. So that's like on a sur on a very like surface level, that's already like the new stuff. But there's like so much more to it than that, because they st then uh, they spend some they start off in the Breath of the Wild world before they start off talking about the new powers. So the first new power they show off is Recall, which allows you to rewind things in time. Again, we, technically, we had seen all of these in the trailer. We just didn't know we had seen them all in the trailer. I mean, some of, like, Recall and Ascend were more obvious than Fuse and Ultra Hand. Like, we had always known they were there. We just didn't know what they were called and what they did. And now we do. And now it's, 
you can actually go back and watch the old trailer and be like, oh, that's probably a fuse thing. Like, in one of the early trailers, there was a, um, dra there was a shield with a dragon head on it that was breathing fire. And I was like, oh, we've got a fire-breathing shield. But now, it's very likely that that's a fusion. And yeah, it's, it's not been confirmed, but like, we're like 90% sure that that's a fusion ability. That you fuse this dragon head to your shield, and that makes the shield breathe fire. And that's really cool. Like, just straight up, that's a really cool thing. Oh, I thought I had it. But yeah, so there's stuff like that. But So the first one is Recall, and it allows you to send things back in time. And they talk about how that is just one of many ways you get up into the sky. Right, there are many different ways to get up into the sky. Having, recalling these falling objects is just one of them. There are probably going to be others, you know. Besides for like, I, I'm sure making flying machines is going to be one. There are these, the new shrine looking things have these like swirly things at the bottom. Right, like these green swirlies. And you see one in that gameplay trailer. And you've seen, you see them in um, previous trailers as well. I wouldn't be surprised if those give you a giant upburst that allow you to go up to the sky as well. That wouldn't surprise me at all. That's probably a way making a flying machine. I'm sure some I'm sure there's a way to do it with like the towers. That wouldn't surprise me either. But right, they talk about that. Then you go up into the sky, which is more autumn themed. Right, like all the trees are yellow. You see all the like all the trees are like not birch, but like they're a type of like a white wood. And they've retextured all the sticks and everything. There is definitely a graphical improvement to this game. Not an insane graphical improvement, but there is clearly a graphical improvement here. So we see that. We see these new enemies called conduits. I think they're called conduits. Const they might be constructs, actually. But we get this new enemy, and it's like, oh, okay, they're like, they're like very like simple, like Bokoblin-like enemies. But then, but then I, then they drop a few things. One of them, I'm convinced you're gonna be able to attach the like horn thing to your arrow and make a stabbing arrow, like an arrow that does like piercing damage. I'm convinced that's gonna be a thing. But the other thing it drops is called a Zonite charge. And if you know anything about the lore of Breath of the Wild, the Zonai are mentioned several times as being like this ancient tribe that I can't remember. Okay, the one thing I don't remember is if they predate the Sheikah or if they existed alongside the Sheikah, right? The people who built the Divine Beasts and the Guardians are the Sheikah. I want to say they're, they predated them. Because you can find Sheikah ruins inside Zonai ruins. Because, for example, the one thing that I know is made by the Zonai are the mazes, right? The three mazes in the game, where you get the um, attack up armor, the barbarian sets. Yeah, those are made by the Zonai. And I know that because of that, people, like, there's that speculation that, oh, are the Zonai, like, were they evil? Were they servants of Ganon? And then this trainer were fighting these Zonai conduits. But at the same time, we're also, like, working alongside the... Like, there are clearly some, like, nice Zonai as well. Which is very interesting. Right? Like, at one point you see, like, being able to talk to them. So there's definitely some interesting things going on here. But I'm... Oh! My teammate's awesome. But, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. But that Zonai charge... Like, that's really the only story hint we get in this entire video. Or in that entire 10 minute gameplay. But that's huge. From there, um, the new ability we get is Fuse. So, one of people's biggest complaints with uh, Breath of the Wild was weapon durability. And I, I get it, but at the same time, I personally don't have a problem with it. Because I like that it forces you to use new weapons, right? I know right now in my playthrough of Breath of the Wild, I know we've been hoarding all these ancient axes that do like 60 damage. 
But even still, I feel like the game is forcing that aside. Yeah, the game is forcing me to use new weapons. Outside of those axes. that Again, I'm hoarding until I come into like the next major text of strength. Or I fight the next boss. Whatever Ganon I fight next. I don't know. Maybe Fireblood. It might actually be Fireblood next. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. It's something I think about behind the scenes. But yeah, I, um... Being able to fuse weapons, it seemingly increases a weapon's durability. Right? We see a stick that normally would break in just a few hits. Right? Like, you literally see it takes two sticks to kill one of these conduits. But when they fuse it with a rock the new rock stick is able to kill two conduits without breaking. So clearly fusing helps a lot on these weapons. That's clearly a huge thing. Which is very cool. So that, while it doesn't completely get rid of weapon durability, it does change a lot of things. And that's very important. So I feel like that's addressing one big problem. But also just the amount of stuff you're able to fuse. Of course, the first thing everyone was obsessed with was Meat Arrow. And yeah, Meat Arrow is going to be very cool because you can fuse weapons. And you can even, like, try fuse stuff, it looks like. So, like, you'll be able to fuse a weapon and then fuse it again with something else. Like, at one point you see him, like, make, like, a long stick or something like that. And then he gets the option to, like, fuse it with a rock. So it looks like you'll be able to do multiple fuses. I saw someone make like a like a giant like 10 pronged stick with like fusion. It was a fan art, but it was very cute. And so yeah, I totally think something like that is possible. I, I, there's probably going to be some sort of hard limit, but it's really... And like I'm sure like... Like I doubt you can make like a super... Like I doubt you could detach like four long sticks together. But that would be funny if you could. That'd be very funny. Um, But fusion, this is huge. Honestly, I saw some... Again, thinking of other people's posts. So, like, after the release of Breath of the Wild, it was like, oh, now... In the same way that Ocarina of Time redefined adventure games in a way that we still feel its influence to this day, Breath of the Wild did that again. I feel like so many adventure games in just the past few years have taken influence from Breath of the Wild. I mean, like, there's the obvious ones like Immortal Phoenix Rising that is literally just a Breath of the Wild clone. But then there are, you know, games like Horizon Forbidden West and Elden Ring that clearly take influence from Breath of the Wild while also doing their own thing. But now Nintendo's introduced this fusion mechanic. And right now, in our heads, it's limitless. It might, in the final release of the game, it's probably not going to be limitless, but it feels limitless right now. And so it's like, oh, now every new open world game is going to have to do this. All right, like, what's even the point if you're not going to do this? And I'm sure we're going to see our copycats. But again, I, Elden Ring's a great game. Horizon Forbidden West is a great game. Didn't play um, Immortals Phoenix Rising, but I don't know. I heard it was okay. Again, I don't play Ubisoft games. Fuck Ubisoft. But, no. I This fusion mechanic really just opens the way. And then you find out that, hey, on top of being able to fuse your items you're holding, you can use the new ability, the Ultra Hand, to fuse weapons. Or to fuse, not weapons, to fuse objects in the overworld. So the example they give in the video is a boat. Right? They, they fuse a few logs together, and they make a boat... But clearly, you're going to be able to do more outside of that. You're going to be able to do more than just create a boat, right? You're going to be able to make flying machines, hot air balloons, anything your mind can imagine. You're going to be able to create with these fusion things. Within reason, again, it seems to follow a Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts system. But that's, that's a good thing. You know, Banjo... I stand by. Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts is a good game. It just needed to be called something other than Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Right? They needed some sort of new character. But they didn't do that.
But yeah, I'm... I think everything... I love that it's called Ultra Hand as well. I mean, again, I love fan service. You know me. I mean, I'm a fan of the Kirby series. And Kir Kirby honestly sucks its own dick more than any other series. But I love it every single time. And that's how I... Right, that's how I feel about this new thing. It's like, oh yeah, we're paying tribute to Nintendo's Ultra Hand. Which, there is an Ultra Hand here in Splatoon 3. Like, it's, like, they literally just referenced it, like, a few, right, in this game. You can see, um, Harmony using one. Which is just a very neat thing. But no, they're actually just calling it. And we see them fuse together stuff, make a boat, put engines on it. And, like, already, so we find out the engine, like, the fans work on batteries. And you're probably going to be able to find batteries out in the world that you can use to, you know, extend the batteries on your, like, flying machine. Because when there's a clip of like them making an airship with the fans, and it's clear that once it takes off from the ground, it starts using a lot more battery, but you're going to be able to, you know, buy batteries or find them in the overworld. But I'm also already thinking like, what if you, you, what if you make a flying ship, send it off flying, and then when the battery falls out, you let it fall to the ground? And then right before it hits, right while and while it's falling, it recharges. And then right before it hits, you use the recall ability to rewind it to right before it fell. And then you let it fall again. Or right, and then you bring it back up to its peak, fly it some more, let it fall again, recharge the recall ability, send it back up. Basically, I'm I'm thinking of in Mario um, Odyssey Hide and Seek. They did a they did a whole series where you could rewind time. And at one point I want to say Fur used the rewind time ability to stay stuck in a tree forever. Right? Like he basically had like infinite wall sliding using it. And that's what I'm picturing with this. You use the recall combined with flying to basically make infinite flying. In my head it works, but it really just depends on how batteries recharge, right? When you use recall on something with a battery, does it undo the battery recharging or will the battery stay the same? Depending on the answer to that question, I legitimately think you could get infinite flying. But it's some it's something I've been thinking about, like, and because again, it works in Mario Odyssey hide and seek. They're able to do infinite wall sliding. I think it would work here. So it's, it's just something I've been thinking about. And um, Aonuma literally calls that out in the video. And it's like, after seeing this, you probably have come up with some ideas. And you'll be curious to see what you come up with. And it's like, yeah, no, I've already started thinking about things. It redefines the entire game. It really does. It's amazing. So the Ultra Hand and the Fusion are so impressive. The final ability is Ascend. And whereas, like, okay, Ultra Hand is clearly a better Magnesis. Recall is a variation of Stasis. Ascend seems to be this game's version of Cryonis. Because Cryonis was a very situational ability, right? It allowed you to not walk on water, but easily navigate around water. Here, Ascend allows you to, instead of having to climb up mountains, as long as you can find a cave, you can ascend up it. Right, you can easily get to the top. So they're clearly, right, It's it reminds me, it fits that, it's not always going to be applicable, but it's clearly a very situational thing. And like, they they point out like, oh, well, what if you get stuck in a, in a cave? Or in a cage. You'll be able to ascend out of that cage. And in one of the earlier trailers, you literally see Link get trapped in a cage. So I'm sure that's something you're going to have to do at some point. Right, so that's very clearly intention. So yeah, it's it's probably the I honestly I think recall has a lot of potential, but it really honestly them recalling up to the sky. I want was it Game Champ three thousand? They pointed that out where it's like this honestly recalling to the sky might be one of the craziest things in the game. But we won't actually know. Like, maybe they'll come up with something clever for it. Maybe this is the cleverest it gets. But, like, I feel like there's a lot of potential to recall. Ascend, Ascend feels very situational. 
And right now, there seems to be no substitute. So, right, every ability seems to have its substitute. But that would make Fuse the substitute for bombs? And honestly, like, I'm sure there'll be some sort of bomb. Like, we literally see him use a bomb stick in one of the trailers. Or at least a stick that, like, shoots a fireball out of it that might explode. I kind of don't remember if it explodes. So there's clearly going to be some stuff there. But it's... There seems to be no one-for-one -one bomb substitute. And that might be good because, you know... I doubt they want people to, um bomb shuffle forever i don't remember i can't remember the name of the actual ability it's not called a bomb shuffle is it i don't remember what it's actually called so bullet time bounce is a different thing What's it it's a bomb something i don't know i'm sure they don't want people doing that again even though i'm again flying machines kind of negates the reason for us to do that in the first place kind of <laughs> I don't know. Speedruns are going to be crazy. I love Breath of the Wild speedruns so much. Specifically because... I think Breath of the Wild... Like, yeah, eventually, you know, we found the pattern for the perfect thing. But I love the idea in Breath of the Wild speedruns. That, um... Just from the start of the game, you can go to the final boss. I wonder if they're going to do that again. Can you just go from the start of the game to the final boss? Because that would be crazy if you can. Part of me doubts it. Specifically because there seems to be these seven tiers. And part of me thinks that, oh, you're going to have to get these seven tiers before you can fight the final boss. Speedruns are still going to be crazy. But it does definitely make me think that, oh, they're not going to do that specific thing again. And then, yeah, the trailer ends with them heading back down to the surface. Because, of course, all these crazy um, fusion weapons, the enemies will also be able to use. Makes sense. Right? If you're going to implement the mechanic, you might as well give it to everything. But, yeah, no, I'm... I'm very impressed with everything. And, right, the ending... Uh, other there's tons of other and like this is one of those trailers where it's like yeah because like i remember after the original e3 thing game explains made like a two hour video just analyzing things that we could see outside of the great plateau and that just this one 10 minute trailer feels like there's so much to see outside of the great plateau or outside of this one sky island they show right like there's like you see multiple shots of dragons at one point, they look up, and you see just another sky island, like, way above them as well. There's all the floating cubes that I know some people have speculated to be the mazes, which would make sense. There's that giant floating spear. There's a giant dark cloud. There's a Korok with a backpack. There's so much here. It's... Honestly, I feel... Right, I know there's a lot of people who have been concerned with this, right, game, specifically because Nintendo's not showing much. But honestly, I, I really hope this, like, dissuaded a bunch of people's fears. It did mine. It, 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 it did mine. I feel so much more confident in this game now. How much? Okay, so I was at 62, and now over here, 1650. Yeah, I played a lot of this game earlier. So yeah, now, the one thing that did suck. So I bought, I was able to, of course, snag my hands on one of the um, deluxe editions of this game. I got an email today saying my Deluxe Edition won't come in until the Tuesday after the game releases. Fuck. Yep. I'm not getting it on launch day. I'm getting it the following Tuesday. So I have to go through that entire first weekend without being able to play it. Fuck. That sucks. That sucks. The, to be fair, this this exact same thing happened with Xenoblade 3. When I bought the Deluxe Edition for that, same thing. Oh, yeah, we'll get it to you. I think they got it to me, like, a week later. I don't know why companies are so bad with this. 
I mean, I know why. Capitalism. But it sucks every time. But yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. It looks great. And honestly, I don't need to see anything else. I don't need to see anything else. I, I feel like, yeah, any fear you could have about this game be... Like, I know there... I saw, like, one or two people on Twitter complaining that, like, no, it still looks too similar. Everything down below looks too similar. Blah, blah, blah. Complain, complain, complain. No. I think this looks great. I'm super impressed with everything we've seen here. I love it. I, I yeah, I don't need to see anymore. I'm good. Man, Tears of the Kingdom, man. It's it's literally a little more than a month away. I want to say it's like 40 days. It's probably 41 days. Ah. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. So, next up, our next story is about PSVR. So, PSVR 2 came out uh, like a month ago now and so when when it originally released by the by the end of march sony had predicted that they were going to sell two million units um yeah that didn't happen instead they sold two hundred seventy thousand. so right two seven zero 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 a far shine uh, 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 far away from the two, uh, two million they wanted. And you know why? The price. I, 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 I agree. The original report that broke the story was like, yeah, in order to recover, they're probably going to have to do a price cut. And I completely agree. The, like, the fact that PS5s are rare is, like, I feel like there are some issues with this thing that are easy enough to get around. Specifically the fact that it's wired. Like, that kind of sucks. Speci especially when compared to something like the MetaQuest. I know another uphill battle for this thing is that you need a PS5 to use it. Whereas the MetaQuest, you don't, right? It literally just works out, out of the box. So that's another thing holding this back. But, um... Really, PS5s being rare is like, that's just... I think that's a smaller issue. It still is pro Again, I think it's one of the bigger issues than right it being wired. The big thing for me has always been the price. Because I was considering picking one of these up. Because I played some PSVR. And I really liked it. All, all my time I've spent with PSVR on PS4. I've really enjoyed. I think it's a great... It's it's a lot of fun. So I was looking forward to PSVR 2. And, but then the price point out, came out. And it's $50 more expensive than the PS5. And the PS5 is like, what, 500 bucks? And this thing's what, 550? God, is this thing 600? I think there is a $600 edition that comes with Horizon. I really, and they also need Half Life Alex. I, I, Valve, I, I think Valve would be open, but that's just me. But yeah, so this is a far cry from it. They're probably going to do a price cut. I don't know. You know, there's that fear. Again, Greg Miller Greg Miller talked about, oh, the you let the Vita fail. I don't want this to become the next Vita. I think VR, after finally playing VR, I think VR has a ton of potential. I've been, I've, again, we're not fully there yet. But I feel like it's got a ton of potential. And so I think this thing needs a price cut. How much of a price cut? God, I don't, would 100, if, okay, Right now it's at 550. Let's just say I think it's at 550. I don't let's just say 550. Cut it down to 450. Would that be enough for me? God, would I want to would I pick it up at 5 450? I don't know. I might not, honestly. I might not pick it up at 4. That might still be too much for me. I don't know. I, I don't know how much a, you. I think they really should hit, try to hit whatever the meta quest is. And I know the meta quest went up in price recently. And fuck Facebook. You know, Facebook's a terrible company. Where did I see a meta quest on sale? Meta quest two. A meta quest two is. This one, this one's on s normally 400 
on sale for two three not three forty nine. Um, I don't know if that's a good version or whatnot. I do think though, yeah, they want to hit that 400, 450 price point. It's just crazy that, yeah, you know, they were able to put an entire computer in that Meta Quest, and yet you need a PS5 to play PS5 VR. I mean, it might be, ins it might be like a whole better thing. And like, I know like the good, like the HTC Vive, which. I know was real high-end at one point. I don't know if it still is. Again, I don't really keep up with some of this stuff. Or if I have, it's only relatively recently. I know you needed a computer for that one. I don't know. I feel like, again, Facebook really wants the meta thing to work. Or at least Zuckerberg does. You know? And that's clearly... The metaverse is failing on all accounts right now. And that's why Facebook is shifting over to AI like every other company, which has its own slew of problems that we're definitely going to be seeing in the future. It is, it sure is interesting. Yeah, I would I if they 450, god, that still seems like so much. I mean I could get an OLED switch for half the price. Especially if that Switch 2 rumor or the Switch Pro rumor is true. I might uh, I don't know. I'm probably not picking one any, up one anytime soon. That's what I'll say. But I just find it interesting. But no, I totally the failure totally makes sense makes sense in my opinion right with all the factors again and the biggest one being the price yeah this was kind of inevitable two million sales though i get why sony wants it but i get i also get why it didn't happen so next up so today is april fool's day um i did not have an april fool's day joke of course i mean the only joke i have today is the splat fest theme Aliens, Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, really? They could have actually done, like, a really good, like, April Fool's Day theme. Like, like, oh, how do you prank people? T-Ping, The House, Whoopee Cushion, uh, some other one. Like, they could have actually done, like, a really good April Fool's Day theme. But nope. Instead, we get Aliens, Loch Ness Monsters, and Bigfoots. It's a dumb Splatfest theme. But so what actual April Fool's Day pranks happened today? So I didn't, I don't have everything written down here. I mostly have some video game ones. And then we'll talk about the big one being Minecraft. But I've got some smaller ones. So Sega put out a Sonic game. That is a Sonic virtual novel. That is, I think it's titled, like, The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. And, yeah, it's, like, a murder mystery Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, virtual novel. That's, I love when, again, I love a good April Fool's Day prank. Because nowadays, April Fool's Day pranks are just marketing. I know there are some people who really fucking hate April Fool's Day prank. Joe Merrick. <laughs> and totally justified. Totally justified, by the way. I get why he fucking hates them. But, you know, I've always taken the college humor approach. That, right, trying to do a joke to make people laugh, even if it's just corporate marketing, I mean, I'd rather have that than the soulless marketing machine of capitalism. They're both awful, but one is less awful than the other. Because fucking, I mean, capitalism. Capitalism ruins everything. Again, go watch that co the college humor Defender of the April Fool, or whatever it was called. But yeah, the Sonic the Hedgehog thing, that's neat. I know, did KFC put out their dating sim last year? Their virtual novel dating sim? Very funny stuff. So that was good. Among Us did one this year. They did horses again. So like, last April Fool's, they did horses. And it was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Okay, like these Among Us centaurs. And they did it again? So that, they lose for unoriginality. Because they literally just did the same joke again. But they updated their um, 
the one change they did is their like assassin mode is now like a sheriff instead. So that's like the one change they made, and it's like okay, that's kind of clever, right? He's like a cowboy sheriff wrestling up all the wild Among Us horses. Okay, fine, whatever. Again, I kind of wish they did something more interesting than the same joke they did last year. But whatever. Usually Fall, Fall Guys had good... I loved Fall Guys' April Fool's Day thing the past, like, two years. I don't even know if they did anything this year. Because they... Like, Fall Guys just gave out crowns, basically. They did, like, a big crown event, and it was awesome. I loved it. I don't even know if they did anything. Final marathon? They might have. I don't know. The Fall Guys the Fall Guys April Fool Challenge was so cool. It was very simple, but I loved it. I really did. But that was back when, you know, crowns meant something. Uh Landfall Games put out a thing where they made like this whole like collection. Cause they talked about like they put out a whole video that was like, hey, these were our previous April Fool's Day pranks. Mostly relating to like making fun of port PUBG and Fortnite. Right? Remember Totally Accurate Battlegrounds? That was a PUBG parody. Yeah, they talked about that. But there, for this year that yeah, they put out like this whole like little Remember how Devolver did their whole like Devolver bootleg collection a few years back? Not for April Fool's Day. That was for Devolver's... E That's the one thing I'm going to miss about E3. And I'm sure they'll still do them anyways. But the Devolver showcases are so great every year. I'm going to miss those. Even though I bet they'll still just keep happening. Yeah, I bet those are just going to keep happening. But they're great every year. And yeah, they put out like a Devolver bootleg collection one year. And that's kind of, again, that kind of feels like what Landfall Games did. It kind of, at least that's what it reminds me of. It might not actually be that at all, but that's what it reminds me of. So that's, that's cool. Um, Toby Fox on his, like, so Toby Fox has like a Delta Run stream thing. Or it's like an, e or it's an email feed. And for the email feed this year, he did, um... He, he made it where he's like, oh, I accidentally sent out the wrong thing. And it was just a picture of him wearing swim trunks covered in foam. Right? Just absolutely drenched in foam. So that was what Toby Fox did. Yeah, very weird, very random. Totally on brand for Toby Fox. Um, I remember there being a video of some... Got is some wrestler wrestling a giant cinnamon toast crunch. I don't know if that was an April Fool's Day prank, but it might have been. Uh, anything else I remember seeing that stood out? You see, the problem is usually I find out all about the April Fool's Day stuff when I read like an article tomorrow or in like two days. Because there's one like web, usually like a website or two that just collects them all into like one easy to read news article. So that's usually when I learn more about them. But I haven't read that yet, so yeah. Again, it's weird to be streaming on April Fool's Day. That doesn't happen. But the one I do want to talk about, I do want to give specific credence to, is Minecraft. Okay, so the Minecraft... How do I want to start this? So, you remember, you know the company Think Geek? Usually for Think Geek's April Fool's Day stuff, they put out like, hey, here's a bunch of cool products. Wouldn't it be funny if we actually made these? And then like a week later, they're like, hey, guess what? All those fake April Fool's Day products, we actually made them. That's what I feel like about this Minecraft update. Like they're coming into this being like, hey, look at all these funny little updates we added to the game. When in actuality, they should just add this to the actual game. This is way too clever. And this gives... Like, their whole update is trails and tales. Like, hey, tell your own tale in Minecraft. And now this April Fool's Day update has added so much flexibility to the game. 
that it really would allow you to tell your own tale and shape the world however you want it to be. But at the moment, it's just an April Fool's Day update. And that's so disappointing. So how this all started was last night, it looked the Minecraft launcher updated with like fire on the page. Like, you know, a bunch of like little Minecraft fires that you could click. And I was like, really? Is that all they're going to do? Because Minecraft has had some crazy April Fool's Day updates. They've had some very generic ones, but they've had some great ones. A big point in my memory is the Lugs and Love and Hugs update. Where, you know, they added the pink wither, stained glass, TNT half slabs, and tons of other stuff. That... That was like, that was the first, I, I don't think that was the first Minecraft April Fool's Day joke. Definitely wasn't, but that one will always stand out in my memory. Seeing like all these YouTubers get together and pretend like, hey, this is the big new update. The Love and Hugs update. And it was just amazing. It was, it really was a special point in time that I really, I don't think any of the other updates have recreated. But I think that was just because people like pretended to take it seriously but there have been other cool updates. The Infinite Dimensions one was, you know, had a lot of fun, had a lot of cute Easter eggs. Did like that one. Uh, last year's one block update where, you know, you could only do one block at a time and people actually beat the game with it was really cool as well. So, like, to see it start off with this fire thing, I was kind of, like, disappointed. I was like, really? That's all we're going to get? And then, this, so that I saw that last night. And then this morning when I woke up, I saw a video of someone being like, hey, they added the moon to Minecraft. And I was like, okay, this is an April Fool's Day joke. But I didn't know if it was like official or not, because it was just like a single like TikTok I saw. And I didn't see anybody else talking about it. And I didn't actually look it up, but I was like, huh, I don't know if that's, because the moon is literally just endstone and there were like moon cows. And I was like, is this real? I don't know if this is real. It was real, but I found out that later. So the real update, when I first saw it, was like, hey, you know how Minecraft does those mob votes every year that everyone hates? So they was like, hey, what if we did those mob votes, but instead had you vote on things you could add into the game while playing the game? So, you know, while you're playing the game, hey, do you want to add in a game rule that makes it so that instead of chickens dropping eggs they instead drop spider spawner eggs wouldn't that be funny well hey you can vote on that now hey do you want to add in a new cape into your minecraft world that um just says this guy is awesome well you can vote on that and like if you're playing on like a server multiple people can vote so like that's the it's that's the basic conceit of it it's like you've got all these different game rules that you can vote on and they added, like, a hundred game rules. And, like, a lot of those game rules have, like, the chicken one. Can have, like, any random block it can lay instead of laying eggs, right? So it's got, like, a bunch of different variations to it. I want to say there's something like 300 variations. But it added a ton of new stuff. Um, a lot of things that had previously been in mods... But now they've like, it's like, oh yeah, it's kind of officially in the game now. Like, um, a mo I'd seen a mod years ago that added potions that would turn you big or small. And that, this new update, this April Fool's Day joke update adds that. So there's now a potion of big and a potion of small that, you know, doubles the player's height, quadruples the player's height. And then there's the potion of small that cuts the player down to one block. And then cuts them down to... It's not even like a quarter block. It's like a sixteenth of a block. It's something like really small like that. And it's like, yeah, that's an awesome feature. That should just be in the game. They're, they added all these new um, potions that can turn you... to That can make a player look like any mob. Again, this has been a mod for years now. But it's like, oh, you want to look like a silverfish? You want to look like an enderman? Well, there's a mod that does that now. Okay, that's really cool. And you can get it as, it's like a rainbow bottle that you can get as a splash potion. So you want to make all the zombies look like silverfish? You can do that now. 
And I'm like, that's an amazing feature. That should be in the game. Why isn't that in the game? And you can transform yourself as well. You want to make your player look like um, a silverfish? Yeah, you can do that. It also adds in a new testificate called Ray Tracing. Not testificate, but he's like a player character. But you can also use the transform feature and tra type in a player's name. And it'll make you look like that player. So you type in freaking Green and it'll make you look like Green. Which, like, you've... So, I can't... Has there ever been a way to do that before? Outside of, like, mods. Because, like, I can think of... Like, I know you can get uh, player heads that have players' names on them. But, like, the idea of actually getting, like, a... Actually being able to make yourself look like another player is really cool. And if... I don't know if you can apply it to NPCs as well... But that would make for a great use in an adventure map. Again, the update's called Trails and Tales. Imagine being able to create like an adventure map and use this transform feature to trans to make a bunch of like testificates in your world that look like Minecraft YouTubers or whatever, right? You get Honeydew and Zephos, but then you they're villagers, and you can trade with them, and maybe you can even customize the trading. I know some of the stuff you can do with MBT data, but like, or with, not MBT, with, yeah, MBT data and data, data packs. But like, just having all this stuff in vanilla, that's kind of awesome, right? I want this to be in the full game. They added um, new blocks. There's a block that you make with a pickaxe, and it's kind of like a dispenser or a dropper, but it mines blocks. Right now, it's very OP, because I think it can even mine, like, Bedrock. But, like, nerf that a little bit. Maybe have, like, some sort of restriction to it. Right? Like, maybe it's slower, depending on, like... De right? Depending on what block it mines, it works differently. Like, it takes forever to mine Obsidian. Like, it takes, like, as if you were mining it with, like, a stone pick. But it, like, mines Cobblestone a little faster. It's just... It's an automation block. That, again, has been in mods for years... But the idea of it being in vanilla is awesome. There's a placer block that, right, it can place blocks down. And, like, it places down TNT and it activates it. Which I know you can kind of do in vanilla. But the idea of a placer block is really cool as well. All these things. And it's just like... And there's, like, so many other game rules on top of that. Again, all the ones I'm referencing right now come from Exuma Void's video. So I recommend you go watch that one, because while he does not cover everything, he covers a lot of different things. Because there are there's over a hundred of these. They are so cool. Like, one of them is you can literally change the color of blocks. So have you ever wanted to make, like, a mystical forest in Minecraft? If, right, do you want to tell a fantasy tale where instead of using a texture pack to make your mystical forest, you just use the default game? Well, hey, there's a new, the new up, this April Fool's Day update adds a biome tint feature where you can change like, hey, in taiga biomes, leaves are now a shade of blue instead. So that way you can have a mystical forest. Such a cool idea. And it's like, yeah, no, that would, right, again, you can do that with a texture pack or a data pack, but just being able to do that in the vanilla game with no updates, no additions, is amazing. Um, what else? King. So you know how like there's the Jeb Easter egg. That's like, hey, right? If you type Jeb on a sheep, Jeb underscore, it'll make the sheep rainbow. Or if you type Dinner Bone on a mob, it'll turn that mob upside down. They added a King B Dogs one. I think it's King B Dogs. Where if you do that, it makes the. Uh, it gives. If you give that to a wolf, it gives the wolf a crown. And it's like, yeah, why isn't that in the default game? That should totally be there. I also, they 100% should add the Technoblade one as well. Where if you name a pig Technoblade, it gives the pig a crown. Right? And I know some people will say, well, oh, if you if you praise Technoblade like that, then you have to praise every other Minecraft YouTuber. Right? When they eventually pass. And yeah, no, they totally should. Minecraft wouldn't be where it is today without these people. So I'm fine with the game constantly paying tribute to them. That's actually really cool, in my opinion. Yeah, do it. So, I'm... Everything about this is so impressive. 
And then finally there's the moon. So you go to the moon and the moon is made of cheese. These cheese blocks that you can eat. And like you can, it literally, they literally added vertical slabs kind of. Because you can eat these, they are come in cubes of four. And so you can literally eat four of the cubes and make a vertical slab. They should have put vertical slabs in there. That would have been really funny. Again, I think everything in here should be in the default game. And that, yes, that includes vertical slabs. But no, so they added the moon. So to get to the moon, you gotta go to the new... There's not a new height limit, but if you go up to the height, to a height of, um... I want to say it was 690. It'll now take you to this new... It'll transport you to the moon dimension. So on the moons, all the ground is made of cheese. There's no, like, caves or anything, but there are, like, craters. And then there's ca there's moon cows that walk backwards because they're moonwalking. And there's, at the center, there's, like, this new copper structure that has this... When you step on the pressure plate, it, like, grows out, and it has this really cool animation. Very simple, but very cool. And then once it's fully grown, you can, like, climb up it to find, like, resources. And it's just, like, they're not, like, good resources or anything. It'd basically be stuff for, like, building a moon base. So it's nothing too complicated. But it's kind of cool. And, like, it adds this new block that basically, you know how, like, in, in like, Mario games or there's, like, the donut blocks that where you stand on them too long, they kind of fall beneath you? Yeah, there's, like, a copper block that works like that. Yeah, that should... I, I mean, I know we have drip leaves, but this should also totally be in the game. But yeah, it looks really cool making it. It's it's a very simple structure. It's just literally just a bunch of bronze pil or copper pillars. But it looks cool. And I would... Even though this is clearly a joke, I would love for this to be in the game. You know, make the... Ch don't make the moon out of cheese, obviously. Make it look a little different. But yeah, add a moon dimension. And make it right... You go up to the height limit... And, you know, there's... Ca I don't need it to be much there. Because, like, on the real moon, there's not much there. But just as, like, a little cute thing you could do. And, you know, I know there's, like, moon... Like, mods like Moon Quest. That have you worry about oxygen. And you have to build a rocket ship and whatnot. Don't make... Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just keep it simple, moon. But then... Because then I had... The, like, okay. So, after seeing the Tears of the Kingdom trailer. You see Link rewind time by climbing on this rock to get up into space. And that made me think, what if in Minecraft, when they add the moon, in, right, height limit stays at 310 or whatever it is, but the moon is still up there at 600. So to get to the moon dimension, you have to find a way to get up to that 600, but you can't build past 300. So then, like how in Tears of the Kingdom, there are multiple ways to get up to the sky. There would now, you have to figure out the multiple ways to get up to the moon, right? Like the obvious one would be you use an elytra and firework rockets. But maybe there are other ways to do it. Maybe you could build a TNT cannon and blast yourself up to the moon, right? Like that would be really cool. Maybe there is some sort of like slingshot thing. Maybe you use slime blocks to, like, push yourself up. I don't know. Some sort of creative way to get up to the moon by doing the block limit. And there'd be, like, multiple ways to do it. I think that would be an amazing feature to get us to the moon. And I love how the moon looks as well. But no, after seeing the Tears of the Kingdom stuff and seeing this moon in Minecraft, I'm just, that's all I can think about. Like, what are the multiple ways to get to the moon? That, you know, you do without having to just build up there. Like, you have to get creative by throwing yourself up into the sky. Blowing up end crystals. Stuff like that. That Waiting for it to rain and riding a trident all the way up there, right? Like a spinning trident. That would be awesome. They'll never do it, obviously. The moon, right, the moon and all this stuff is sadly going to go away next week. But I really hope it doesn't. I mean, I expect I expect the moon to... Other stuff, I could totally see staying. Again, stained glass was in the Love and Hugs update. And it eventually got added to the game. I could see some of these other features get added to the game. 
But yeah, really, you know, so far people have been really disappointed with the 1.20 update. I, yeah, I kind of agree. Um, with the Trails and Tails update. I love Cherry Blossoms. I really do. I love the Cherry Blossom biome. But other than that, it's kind of felt underwhelming. But everything in this April Fool's Day snapshot is literally better than everything else they've revealed for 1.20. Other than, again, Cherry Blossoms, which I just love. And sure, the archaeology stuff looks okay. I love the new structures. I think that's a great addition to the game. But no, I, I, they should add, if not all of this, a good like 80% of this should come to the default game. Specifically because it fits their theme of Trails and Tales. Uh, the golden age of Minecraft adventure mode, adventure maps, must have been like eight years ago now. Like, when was the last time you saw a YouTuber play a good, solid adventure map? I Because I don't think people make... I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there who's making the next... Um, I can't even think of a... The only adventure map whose name I can think of off the top of my head was one called Father. That's literally the only adventure map I can think of. There were so many adventure maps back in the day. So many great things that people did with a lot more limited resources. But this new update, right, it's all about telling your tale. And, like, Minecraft has taken steps in the past to make things like adventure maps more accessible. And then, right, there's all the stuff, like, with game modes and game rules and whatnot. Adventure, mo adventure mode was literally created for adventure maps. But everything in this April Fool's voting snapshot feels like it would be perfect for adventure maps. I would love to see them do it. I think it would be awesome. Will they? Who knows? Again, the history precedence that they will not. Because, again, st yes, Stained Glass made it into the game from the Loves and Love and Hugs update. I legitimately think it took three years. Maybe even longer. So all these other things could take for, you know, forever, if not at all. Like, I never expect the moon to actually get it into Minecraft. But getting those big and small potions, getting those transformation items would be fantastic. And I feel like there is so much you can do with them. But this is Mojang, you know. They, they never take the easy path. I know that can that usually can be interpreted as a good thing. I am not interpreting that as a good thing here. Right? Like them not taking the easy path is more of obstinance rather than a challenge, if that makes sense. But we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But I was super I'm I was super impressed with Minecraft April Fool's Day stuff. I guess that's what it all comes down to. So on to Wibby. So what have I been playing? Well, I've been playing Splatoon 3, right? Just today. Put a lot of time into it. I made some new gear, as you can see, right? I've got these octo glasses. I've got some red sneakers. It's okay. You know, I've I've had fun playing the game today. But now that I finished my audiobook, well, I mean, there's always the next audiobook to start. Right? I've got one more that I need to start, but yeah, we'll see. But I've been enjoying it. I have been enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, as you can see, I'm using the NZAP 98 or 89. I do want to try. A, there was actually a patch to this game. After, so there was a tournament recently. And Crab Tank just dominated in the tournament. And it was like, after seeing that, you think Nintendo's finally going to nerf Crab Tank? And yeah, sure enough, they nerfed Crab Tank. Is it the end-all, be-all? I don't know, we'll see. But you know, they nerfed Crab Tank. They buffed Big Swig again. I, it, Big Swig might actually be good if it gets another kit. I stand by that. 
big swig might actually be good if we get another kit. We got an art... Oh my gosh, I want to show off that art book. After this battle, I'm going to show off the art book. So all this art book stuff dropped. And including all these new haircuts and weapons. And it looks amazing. Like seriously, I'm amazed none of that made it into the game. Because it's all really cool. Like, I think it is so cool, some of the stuff they left out. Like, we had seen some picture. Like, there's a new bow that looks like the uh, Dapple Duelies. That is, right, it's more of like a tactical hunting bow. It looks great. There's a new weapon that I think is supposed to be a type of... It's either an ink brush or it's a Spatana. I think it's more of an ink brush, but it's like a tube. You're, like, using two brushes... And I'm like, that's a really cool weapon. Why is that not in the game? There's there's duct tape, which they might have been considering making duct tape either a weapon or a special, which sounds amazing. Like, legitimately, I think that would be really cool. It'd be really weird. I had no idea how it would work, but you see it in one of the screenshots. Or in one of the concept arts. Not screenshots. I don't know. There's so much left on this game's cutting room floor. But, I mean... There's always time they could add stuff. I mean, they, like, five months after launch, they added a bunch of new hairstyles to Splatoon 2. So some of these new cool hairstyles, they can still add to this game. Alright, there's nothing stopping them from doing that. It's just really interesting how much concept art got left on the cutting room floor. We got a lot of designs for Pearl and Marina, like a lot of their concept designs. And all of them... I like. I love Pearl and Marina's look in this game. Their new... Uh, um, off, the, off the hook featuring damp socks. Like, their new designs are amazing. But all of the concept art for them also looks amazing. There's like four different designs and I love all of them. We got some new Shiver, uh, Shiver Frey, and Big Man concept art. And they're... There are some interesting designs of Frey. Like, real, like it's fascinating some of the ideas they came up with. And some of them are like... But, you know, again, I've said this before. The more time we spend with Frey, especially after doing the story mode, the more I really do like her. And I seeing these concept designs, I'm like, okay, some of these are really cool. But I kind of really do just love Frey's design. They, the one they ended up with... It's such a good design as well. Like, I really do like it. And I like... But these concepts are just also really cool. I don't have... I really just have some of the hairstyle stuff. Like, that's all I have to show off. But I'm... I'm impressed. God, so much left on the cutting room floor. But, you know, again, we have a year and theoretically like four or five months more of updates. And that's, there's also a paid story DLC, and there might be two more DLCs after that. Again, there is a theory that we are getting more DLCs. So, we'll see. We shall see. Give me a second here. I'm going to pull up Twitter. Where is Twitter.com? While Twitter still exists. I mean, everyone was supposed to be unverified today. I don't think that happened. But it was supposed to. Alright. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, wrong monitor. There we go. So, we got some new concept art here. Um, so right, look at some of these things. Uh, all these hairstyles, man. I don't, do we even have, did we get any, I mean, there's some of the old ones, but like, I love this one with the bite mark taken out of it. This half hair design is fantastic. I love these dreads. Those are great. Um, I, th I think that one's in the game, technically. Um, this is the page I was talking about. So, I don't think... Besides for, I think... 
are any of these in the game? But look at... I love this one. This is the new weapon I was talking about. Again, it kind of looks like a brush, but I could also see it being a... Um, Botana, but I think it's a brush. Two-handed weapon. I, great. That should be in the game. That should totally be in the game. Um, but I love this haircut as well. I love this. Because I know we ha the Octoling has a ponytail already. But it's a small ponytail. So I love this much larger ponytail. That's fantastic. Again, this is the duct tape that... Hey, again, I know... right briefcase this might be nothing but it could have been really cool same thing with this right another hairstyle i don't think that's in the game i know we have singular braid but twin braids in the back of the hair fantastic idea should have been in the game uh and this is the bow i was talking about again it kind of looks like the dapple dualies but it's clearly a more modern bow it looks great i i hope these two new weapons come in the game at later points Specifically because we only have two ink brushes and two bows. We also need another Splatana, which is, again, why I'm kind of spectacle, skeptical. But those all look great. Um, here's a bunch more. Again, another ponytail. I love I love both of these so much. Braid ponytail, that one. Um, is that Space Buns? I think that's supposed to be Space Buns. And then um, we got even more over here. Again, I, there's some ones like this. But there's tons of new stuff as well. God, so many cool designs that we just didn't get. We just didn't get at all. Ugh, what a shame. Uh, let me see if I can find the off-the-hook one real quick. Give me one second. I know it's the same person who's been posting all of this. Um, okay, I don't see it anywhere in here. Um, let's see if I can find it. He oh, here it is. So right, so this is this is the the game the new design that's used in the game itself, but you've got this one right. Pearl's got a much bigger crown. Marina's got a shaved head. Looks great, and this one I also love. Again, it's kind of like their you know the chaos versus order. Like this one's clearly more based on that. You know, Pearl's in all black with the megaphone. Marina's in all white, but all three of these designs are amazing. I love the one we ended up with. I think this one is fantastic. But all of these are great. God. But yeah, I... You know me, I love me some Splatoon. And yeah, Pearl and Marina are totally my favorites. Right? I know I've said it before, but... God. I'm so glad they're coming back for the wedding DLC. That better be a wedding DLC. I'm gonna be so disappointed if it isn't. What's even the point if there's not a wedding? All right. Um, let's real quick hit up the machine. We have 15. Wow. Wow, I've got a bunch of these. I'm really curious about... I, I, I haven't seen these symbols before. Okay, they're just generic lockers. Yeah, everyone seems to have these symbols on them, and I have no idea where you get those from. My locker hasn't changed much. Yeah. Even though I can now add the... Um, to the inside... Where are my weapon stickers? Did 
Did I get another? I thought I had another one of these. I guess not. Oh, okay. Um. So the other thing I've been doing for... I've been playing. Last week I had mentioned how my copy of The Binding of Isaac, Four Souls Requiem had come in. Right? I got the big box with all the new stuff in it. And so I did finally play it. I sat down and we played a few games. Um, it's great. It is, they added so much new stuff. And so many new characters as well. Like, holy shit. So many new items. It really, it's like, it's, it's basically a whole new game. Like, they basically just made a sequel. I, I know they say you need the base game and you technically do. But there's so much to it. Uh, new characters I got to play as. I got, um, who did I get first? Because, so they, there's a bunch of, like, new Isaac characters. But there's also a bunch of new, um, there's a bunch of new Isaac characters. And there's a bunch of, like, third-party characters. So, like, one of the times I was playing against, someone got, uh, Baba from Baba is You. But then, uh, who was I playing around in that match? I was... Oh, I, w I got Guppy. I got Guppy in the first match. But then halfway through, I got a card that... I think I think it was an item that allowed me to switch my character to a different character. So I then switched it to um, Edward. And so I got... I played, uh, right, Edward McMullen for a while. His, right, him as a character in his own game. And that was cool. And then, I think on the second game, I played as... Another, I think I got another Isaac character. It was... Was it called the Corruption? Or the Glitch? Or Contagion? It was something like that. It was like some sort of like glitched... He was... It's Glitched Eden, basically. And that... I just got... Because it basically... So, Eden... How that... So, right? It's a card game, right? Where you're collecting cards to like do damage to enemies and you know you can get things that buff yourself you can get things that hurt enemies you can get all sorts of crazy items and there's normal there's the eden character normally like you take four random items from the shop and you get to pick one of them and make them an eternal item but the corrupted version basically it allowed you to like duplicate an item from the shop instead and like you could change what item you duplicated and I basically was able to duplicate an item that gave me a new treasure every round. So, like, within just a few rounds, until my opponent literally bought the item to get rid of it. So that way I could stop duplicating it. Right? And it just became... I became super OP and just dominated in that game. And, like, it got to the point, because of some of the new cards, where I was dealing... I think it was seven damage by default, and on a roll of six, I was doing eight damage. And I also couldn't be, I think it was like I couldn't be hurt on a roll of one or six, but I was just doing an insane amount of damage. Like, I got some fantastic combos. Honestly, it's probably one of my most impressive rounds ever. I took a picture of it just because I was like, Holy crap, how did... And the game took forever. Right? That, that game took forever. But I did so well. So I won the second game. And I lost all the others. We played a few. But I was so impressed. I have a picture of that somewhere. But yeah, I was doing like 8 damage. Um, Was that the round I got Godhead? I don't think that was. There was one round where, yeah, I did get Godhead. And that was like... Oh, sh uh, no, I got Godhead right as we won. So I didn't even get a chance to use it. Yeah, that's the second time we have ever seen Godhead, and we didn't even get a chance to use it. And then I did another on another round, it was like I couldn't so basically I did I couldn't be hurt on a roll of two I think it was the it wasn't quap. It was the getting over it item. Where you couldn't be hurt on a roll of two or three, but you instantly died on a roll of one. So like I 
I ended up comboing it with something else where I was, like, doing more damage with, like... It was something to do with, like, I could change a roll to, like, a, a four or something like that. And it was basically, unless I got super unlucky and rolled, like, multiple ones in a row, it was almost impossible to kill me. I still ended up dying, like, multiple times. Like, I rolled multiple ones in a row. But it was a wild... I, and I ended up losing that game. But it was a wild game. I've done... It's the new... Like, so many new things. There's a lot more offensive items. Because that's one of the problems with the original game. It's like there's only a few offensive and defensive night items. Right? Like, there's, there's only, like... Oh, you've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner that increase your health. And you've got certain items like Brimstone and Mom's Knife that increase your damage. But other than that, everything's so conditional. But I feel like this new update, or this new thing added like so many non-conditional items. Right? That just like, oh yeah, we're just going to increase your health or your damage or whatnot. And it's like, yeah, fantastic. I got Brim... Did I get Brim? I got... I can't remember who the character I played... The character I played on the third round was like from a horror movie I had never heard of and he was awful. He was an awful character. But yeah, there's just so many. And it's like, yeah, no, in this, it easily, like, I have a like I said at the beginning, we have, in all my years of playing the original game, we had only ever seen Godhead a single time. And now with this new expansion, I don't know if we'll ever see it again. Oh wow, another swim speed. Because I legitimately feel like you could put another thousand into this. A thousand hours into Isaac. Because there's just so much added. There's so many weird and wacky new items. There's there's so many new souls. I, they add... So one of the new... So I've been trying to figure out if there's a Shovel Knight update or Shovel Knight reference in there. Because I would assume there's got to be a Shovel Knight update or reference. But so far I haven't been able to find it. But yet, there's a ton of other references that, like, I do get. Like, there's a reference to the Tommy Wiseau movie, The Room. There's a reference to, um, Edward, or, Salad Fingers. Is it Salad Fingers? I almost said Edward Scissorhands, but no, there isn't. Um, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac, which is the other, which is a comic created by the guy who created Invader Zim, which I do recommend. I have actually read it. Um, there's so many other things. There's an Among Us crewmate, Baba is You, which, Baba is You was okay, if I remember correctly. Like, he's definitely not as bad as Guppy was, because, yeah, I just got generic Guppy. But, yeah, the Celeste thing is there's now, like, a soul, a bonus soul you can get for Celeste. I know there was a soul you could get for rolling a bunch of ones, which sounds awful, but it's really curious. It's just such a good game. There's a solitaire mode now in the rules, which I did try out. It went okay. Basically, it's like one player, but you have like four lives. And it's like, oh, that's very interesting. I tried it out just out, out of curiosity. But yeah, I easily, if you can get your hands, I've, I've always recommended Binding of Isaac Four Souls. It's one of my favorite board games. And the new one, yeah, if you can get your hands on a copy, it's easily worth it. What did I have here? So, I was the Capric the Copernicus? Was that my character? I had Halo of Flies. You take no combat damage on an attack roll of 1 or 6. The Nod Leaf. Prevent all damage you would take while it's not your turn. The, the Fire Mind. Combat damage you deal is double on an attack roll of 6. Guppy's Paw which increased my damage. Tony, which increased my damage. Um, 2020 Vision, which allowed me to re-roll. I took no combat damage on a roll of three. Uh, what else do I have in here? Um, I have Abandon, which gave me plus three health, but each time you take damage, you die. But again, I don't take on that roll, I don't take damage on a roll of one, six, or three. So literally the only way to kill me was a 2, a 5, or a 4. Which was wild. 
And again, this was all just one game. Um, anything else in here? Oh, this was when I got Godhead at the very... Right, so yeah, I got Godhead right as I won. Yeah, okay. Cursed Eye, Broken Remote, I don't think I ever used. I had Polyphemus, which did plus two damage. So yeah, I was doing seven damage, and with the Firebrain, eight on a perfect roll, on a roll of six. God, I, I loved, I love it. I love all the new stuff, and again... We barely scratched the surface of all the new stuff. That was just what I had on me in my one. That was just the one game I won. Yeah, I had like a mountain of cards laid before me. And my opponent had a bunch as well. Like, there were, there were a stupid amount. It's, it's just a, it's a great, it's a great card game. I really do, I really do recommend it. It was it was my board game of the year a few years when it when it first came out. I was streaming then, so I'm sure I talked about it. And I know I've talked about it a few times since then. Yeah, it's just super impressive. And yeah, this new update, it took for you know, I know there were all the delays because of COVID and everything. Cause I wanna say the Kickstarter was before COVID. It might have been during COVID, but I wanna say it was before COVID. But it's finally out now. And it's everything I dreamed it would be. I don't know. We're not meeting uh, we're not meeting up again this week to play it while too busy for the world. Yeah, I easily if you can get your hands on a copy, it is easily worth it. Yeah. Um. Anything else I've been doing? Oh, there was a new South Park episode. Um, where uh, Randy wants to party with all the boys and Andrew Tate, but instead, and Stan, meanwhile, Stan and Token just want to play Warhammer, so that creates conflict. Meanwhile, Garrison is out in. He's not for. I want to say he's in South Carolina. And, you know, instead of partying, he's rallying with his MAGA constituents. But, you know, he's in love with Rick. And that's all he wants at the end of the day. And it actually ends on a very sweet note. Right? Where Randy has to admit that he needs his wife. And Garrison is willing to give up being president for Rick. At least for now. Because, right, this would have been an easy episode to set up. Hey, guess what? Trump's get, right. We're going to have to bring back Trump because he might win the election next year. But no, instead they're like, eh, we'll see. Which, I mean, since then, Trump, of course, has been indicted. And while uh, there's a someone, someone, you know, one of those Twitter accounts, you know, your pixelated boats, your, um, God, what's their name? They've been they've been just killing it recently. Um Juniper, Juniper. I my first I was like put I know it's pudding, but that's just what their name is. Yeah, they right, one of those accounts, Juniper, pudding, um Dill, um pixelated boat once put out a tweet like, "Whoa, how is Trump going to get out of these charges this week? These are finally going to be the ones that stick." And it's somehow Trump managed to get out of those charges and they didn't stick. So, even though he's been indicted on 30-whatevers, and Fox News is literally melting down, right? They're acting as if this was the death of Jesus. Even though, again, literally nothing has happened so far. But, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less from Fox News, let's be honest here. It's still... Well, he's gotten out of it before. He's gotten out of much worse things before. Again, he literally got away from treason charges. Which are some of the worst things you could possibly do. And he got away from it scot-free. This, these payments, nothing in comparison. I doubt they'll stick. So we'll just have to wait and see. But it's at least good he got indicted. Of course, th something's gonna happen. Right, like I know he's... I mean, we'll see if a mugshot goes out. I doubt it. 
I mean, I want it to happen just because it's going to be funny to see all the clips of Fox News people pretending that Trump is handsome. God, that's going to be so fucking funny. But yeah, I think that takes us to the end. Um, I haven't seen any movies or any... Like, I I want to see Dungeons and Dragons. Mario Brothers movie is next week. And we'll talk about them. But yeah, I think that's it. So, here in the outro... Um, Zelda, it's going to happen at some point. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, it'll happen at some point. Again, we've got a little more than a month to beat it. We've got like 40-something days. So, we... We'll hopefully do it. Again, I'm definitely not going to be able to do everything. Like, even though I'd love to do every... I don't, I'll never do every Korok. Never. That'll never happen. But I would love to at least do, like, all the shrines or something. But I doubt that's going to happen. At the pace we're going... Oh, I missed. Yeah. Yeah, um... What is it? Um, so the Mario Brothers movie is next week. But you know what's also next week? Which is huge. The Owl House series finale is next week. Watching and Dreaming. They put out a trailer, I want to say last week sometime. But it's next week. Next Saturday night. It's We know it is 55 minutes and there are no commercials. So when are we going to be chatting about the Owl House? Well, I'm amazed we got as far as we did with that. Especially with that person right there. Yeah, when are we going to be chatting about the Owl House next week? I don't know. Because I want to say it's at like... 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Like, it's late at night. And I, well, I know, oh, nothing has stopped us from doing these streams late at night before. It is still like, oh, am I gonna, am I gonna have, like, are we just gonna, am I just gonna stay up and watch it? And then we'll talk, and then I'll do the stream afterwards. Is it gonna be a busy news week? I mean, it was a freaking busy news week this week. Is it gonna be a busy news week next week? I mean, we got through everything pretty fast, because... You know, some of those stories I just talked real quick about. You know, Security Breach, PSVR. Some of them not so much. So, we'll see. But yeah, cannot believe the Owl House is ending. It's it's so good. It's so good. You've got a week to, if you've never watched it before, it's all on Disney Plus now. And you've got a week to get caught up. And I think they did confirm that the episode will be on YouTube and Disney Plus shortly after they air. Like the following day. The episode it might honestly even be on YouTube that night. So yeah. You've got a week to get caught up if you want to. Such a good show. Am I gonna rewatch the entire show? No. Nah, I don't have that kind of time. I'll probably rewatch the three specials though. Um. So on the so even though today was April Fool's Day, and I haven't done the, the last April Fool's Day joke I actually did was the um is Steven Universe the worst show ever made part one out of six? That was like a six hour long video. That was the last April Fool's Day joke I did. I don't have... I write, And since then, I'm like, yeah. I know it's basically the same joke as Smosh the Movie. But, you know, I was happy with it at the time. And I, in some ways, I still kind of am. But I haven't really thought about it in a while. And since then, I've really had no desire to do an April Fool's Day joke. But today, I was like, you know... I woke up this morning and was like, wouldn't it be funny... If I uploaded the first part of the Bluey review today, and some people wonder, like, is this a joke? And then it's not. So, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Basically, early this morning, I, I got up and I was like, well, I guess I'll just edit the Bluey review. So, I did a super quick turnaround of the Bluey review. Right, just a few hours from 
I mean, again, we technically I reviewed the show back in like January, like seventh. But um, we talked about it. But I edited the review. Had to do. I cut out actually a little bit. Like, I think the the initial like stream bit was like thirty. I want to say it was like almost forty minutes. And I cut it down to sub-30. And I probably could have cut some more, obviously. Like, I think I talked about Donald Trump at one point. And I legitimately... I think I cut that part, but I might not have, actually. <laughs> God, I don't remember. But I put out the part one of the Blue Ear Review. I'll, uh, next week, of course, is the Owl House. But I'll probably also put out Bluey's 2. Now that I've done part one of Bluey, I'll do part two and three. I also know we do have a movie coming up. So that's a thing. So we have a bunch of these conch shells. I've earned 15 somehow. So we might as well just spin them all and see what we get. Because this is probably the last time I'm playing until this, before the end of this Blackfest. I'd love it if we got something good. I'd also love it if I replaced the drink tickets I used. I used... What did I use? I used a quick jump ticket. I used a swim speed up ticket. And I want to say I used an ink recovery ticket. That sounds right. So if I could at least replace one of those. See, I don't even know if we can get anything good from the shell out machine. Like, or at least from using these shells. Traditional? Was that legendary warrior? Did that... I skipped past it too fast. I did win it. I think I, I think I talked about this last week. I did win a bronze ball in the shell out machine. Okay, right. And I ha do bronze ball count because I know there's an achievement to get like four grand prizes. And I think I got I do the bronze balls count as a grand prize? Because if so, I have one of them. Or do only the gold balls count? Because I've never seen a gold ball. I, I don't know of anyone. I don't even think I've ever seen a YouTube clip of someone getting a gold ball. But yeah, so I've been using the NZAP 98. And I've mostly been using... Because I was curious about the Super Chomp. I don't actually think it's that great. Especially when compared to... Um... The the missiles, right? I feel like the like I on it like I think of all of our times using the super jump today, we only got a single kill with it. So, yeah. How much is okay? God, that only costs two hundred. I I hate you know what I hate. Even when you're scrubbing just a single... Like, let's say you have a piece of gear with only a single slot on it. Scrubbing it still costs 20k. Right? Whether it has all three slots, two slots, or only one. It costs 20k to scrub. God, that sucks. Sucks so much. But I paid it. You know, you pay the price for perfect gear. It's so it's so easy to get perfect gear though nowadays. As long as you're willing to use a few sodas and use a few trunk chunks, it's so easy. And I have so many chunks. But yeah, I want to get at least one piece of perfect gear for every ability. So right now we have I think three total. Yeah, we've got this, which is a bomb up, and then we've got these boots, which are these, and these, which are ink recovery. So I would love to get something, you know, like I want to get a shirt that has some swim speed up in it. I'd love to get a, or I, right, I want a swim speed up shirt, but I also want a uh, ink recovery up thing. I want to get something with three slots of um, uh, intensify action, right? Just because, you know, that's one of the new abilities. Hi, look, it's a good so that's definitely something I've been like, yeah, you know, I gotta start working on that. And you know, getting these two pieces of gear just today worked fine. But yeah, the villain era, I don't think the villain era. Honestly, for as much as I joked about it early on, the villain era clearly never happened. Maybe next time.
Maybe I get, maybe I'll get disillusioned with the game again, and instead of just not playing it, maybe I'll do something else. Oh, hey, look! Oh, it's um, it's that thing, which I always associate with Joe Cat, but I actually think it's a Monster Hunter thing. Either way, it's cool. I see. I've never played Monster Hunter, so I don't know. That's why I always associate with it, with them. Oh, the Pokemon. I also gotta go play some the next maybe next week. We'll play some salmon run. Cause I gotta get that new piece of gear. I did not mean to walk in here. What even is the salmon run rotation? Ah, that's not terrible. Yeah. And then I think they said they until the next major update, they won't be doing any updates. So we're not gonna get any big updates until the next major one. Which ain't bad, I guess. So we'll see. But yeah, um, I don't think we, yeah, some t Breath of the Wild, yeah, we'll be back um, sometime in the near future with that. And yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. 40 days away. And yes, I'm planning on streaming. Even if we have to wait until that Tuesday. Yes, I am planning to stream Tears of the Kingdom. We're gonna take our sweet ass time with it like we are Breath of the Wild. But I do plan on doing it. Is the goal. And you, this was the first Splat Fest that you could do, um... What's it called? The, um, um, the, see, the Squid Sisters perform. Because, yeah, originally they didn't have any music. And then, even though I won some 10x battles, right, like it said right there, I, di I have not won any 100x battles. So far, I have had no luck. I haven't even seen, I can't even remember the last time I saw a 100x battle. Because there's that platform up there that allows you to take pictures, and I've never got to use it. I just hope the next Splatfest is more interesting. Really, the theme for this one was kind of underwhelming. So I just hope the next one does something better. But that'll be next time. Um, anything else? I know I'm stalling at this point. Yeah, we'll be back with more Zelda in the future. But until then, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Till next time, peace.